Okay, here we are. Here we are. Iridimi? No, this is not Iridimi. Iriba. Iriba. This is day 12. 12. Right? Yeah, and you know, I don't even think of days of the week anymore. I think of days of I act. <laughs> I mean, this has really been, other than Mexico, your first trip abroad. Yeah. And it's a fairly radical trip at that. What, uh, after 12 days of being out here from Minjimena to Abeche and then out to the camps, what has that been like for you? What sort of uh, mental and emotional processes hmm. have you gone through? Um, I think uh, Jimena, the capital, was different from, once we left there, it felt completely different. There you had the feel of the city and a little bit of insecurity for some reason that even the locals see it, so I, I guess I wasn't too wrong. Then getting out to the country, we've been driving around so much and it is just beautiful. I, I love the desert environment and seeing the scenery. Uh, we've been driving quite a bit, so it, it's, I, I've enjoyed just looking at uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, I'm amazed at is uh, the adaptability of humans. Yeah. Because we're driving around and you see nothing. You know, it's desert, there is no water. And then you'll see... It's a pretty Spartan place. Yeah. Then you'll see a, you know, something like a seven, eight-year-old girl on a donkey alone. And you just don't see anybody around. But you know that there must be a family living around there, and they're surviving. So, yeah. you know, it's on it the is. edge. And then so just from there going to the camps. <laughs> and, um, again, the first thing that hit, hits me is, is uh, uh, women, how much they work. You know, from before you get to the camps, you see women uh, out on their donkeys with girls uh, collecting wood, and uh, then you go yeah, in. And what are they all, going all through? You see and them still, doing is, is working. They're still so children. They can still be another themselves and big they, part of you know, uh, the, this trip. Uh, just seeing the power uh, of women. They are very and real. And that's, that's another thing that uh, it's it. in, like here where we are, in Iriba and their surroundings. It's really the same people. There's the, the Sagawa, so uh, the border is really just, you know, something that came after yeah. because it's the, the same people on this side and on that side. The other side had to flee to this side to be safe, crossing that imaginary line, but uh, yeah, it's the same people. One, one thing is that uh, they all say that they want to return home, so that's the theme. No matter who you talk to, you know, we want to go back home, but they don't dwell on it. It goes back to, okay, what, what am I doing today? How am I going to survive today? So, so they're really focused on today. And, uh, and it's all not on, uh, you know, it's all not negative. They're also living. You see the children laughing and you see, again, the women with smiles and, and doing their chores and doing their work but still smiling and, and living. So, so it's, um, it's not just all living you know, for the future, for the future and what we're might come, right, it's uh, day to day, and, and a lot of it must be the land, you know, and, and what they have, and it's such an on-the-edge existence that uh, you have to be here today because you don't know, you know, anything in the past, anything in the future is not really, does not make uh, much of a difference if, if you really need to be surviving right now, today. What have been your impressions of, of the children, the refugee children? Uh, beautiful, I mean, it, it's... Uh, there, it's uh, not very different from the the connection that I feel with children back home in, in Mexico. So uh, it's it's just beautiful. And, and but here, I have to have in the back of my mind what they have gone through. What's been your impression of the? Uh, the foreign assistance here and the aid agencies uh, working with the refugees? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm amazed also at uh, the people that are out here working because they're here every day and and living not in... An no, live. not not an easy place to live and uh, I, I guess uh, that's why uh, they don't stay too long. <laughs> you know, I, I don't blame them. Uh, you know, you don't hear anybody staying a lot more than a year but uh, doing incredible work to, to get uh, assistance to this type, kind of place so remote and difficult to get. I mean, for us, we're just, you know, four guys in a car with our little backpacks. It, it's still, it's, uh, you know, it's a challenge to get all the way out here. I just can't imagine 
bringing the tons of food and the yeah. water and everything they need just to get out here. Chad, for, for people to know, just Chad itself uh, doesn't produce a lot of manufactured goods. And so right. even to get uh, in, in, in Jemena, you can't buy a lot of things. So people have to resort to uh, buying it from Dubai or going yeah. to Cameroon. Everything comes from everything, some other place. Everything yeah. comes from yeah. some other place. So there's yeah. only small planes. So if you have, for example, a large generator, we were talking about this today, a large generator, 500-pound generator, there's no other way than to... It has to come by, by land. And then you got to see the roads. If you've seen some of the videos, man, yeah. <laughs> they're so not... Tough. <laughs> they're they're tough. tough. And, and, and organizations are feeding these people uh, 20, 2,500 calories per person per day. Yeah. Uh, every day, every month, uh, there is a distribution which lasts about a week. And so, if you can imagine, all of that food has to come from uh, outside of the country, because right. this country is a food deficit country. Mm -hmm. It has to come from outside the country to Njemena. Get trucked all the way yeah. uh, up here. It's just a logistic. Yeah, thing. the coordinating all of that. It's, it's yeah, it's amazing the work they've done. What about the political situation? Uh, has your understanding of the conflict uh, changed any since being here talking with the refugees? Um, um, not too much. Uh, one thing is that they. They see it in uh, fairly real and simple terms. You know, they they touch their skin and they say it's the color of our skin mm -hmm. that it has us here. You know, the Sudan does not want black people it's in prejudice. Darfur. That that's that's yeah, what exactly. they the way they see it. And 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 uh, yeah, that's what what we had heard before coming here. So um, it's just very real to have somebody that has been living in a village and uh, lived through an attack and then tell you, you know, it's because of this. It's, uh, yeah, it hits home. What is it that you want to accomplish by the time that we're done with? Um, hopefully more and more people are just connecting with the, the people or, of Darfur and, and uh, uh, feeling um, a sense of responsibility, just uh, human to human. You know, uh, we, we, are, we are the same. They're going through this situation right now, and, and it is... Uh, you know, how can we blame those children for whatever political reasons, whatever is happening? How can you blame those children that we see in, in the camp? So um, we, we just need enough people in our countries to put political pressure on the people can, that, that can bring a change uh, to the situation in Darfur. And, and we have to get those people back home.